Or his girlfriend. The goofy carpenter who has to rescue the girl is a little man with a big nose and an even bigger heart, named Jumpman. Because of the restrictions of technology, Miyamoto has to get creative with his character design. And Jumpman you know, is this tiny little sprite with a mustache and, and a hat and overalls, and we know him well today, but the only reason why he looked like that back then was because of the limitations of the hardware. Without a mustache, the Mario sprite would have looked really weird because he wouldn't be able to see the nose in the face. So there's your reason why the guy has a mustache. Hair would look really weird, so they decided, hey, let's give him a hat. The reason Mario had overalls on was because without the overalls, the whole like walking thing would have looked really bad. So there you go, there's the birth of a, a cultural icon. In 1981, the finished arcade game ships to America, where a certain resemblance is noticed. And common lore has it that that name is based on the landlord of the Nintendo offices in New York. The landlord's name? Mario Sigali. And so, Jumpman is named Mario. Despite the unusual story and characters, players quickly learn to love the game. It did very well and it started, you know, more and more people were playing and quickly we realized in America that we had a hit. Before you knew it, Donkey Kong was everywhere. Really what it was is it was jumping over the barrel.